from HanselMinutes.com. It's Hansel Minutes, a weekly discussion with web developer and technologist Scott Hanselman. This is Lawrence Ryan announcing show number 371, recorded live Thursday, May 9th, 2013. Support for Hansel Minutes is provided by Telerik, offering the best in developer tools and support. Online at T-E-L-E-R-I-K.com. And by Franklins.net, makers of GesturePad, a powerful gesture recording and recognition system for Microsoft Connect for Windows developers. Details at GesturePAK.com. In this episode, Scott talks with Brian Pugh about integrating Office and the open web. Hi, this is Scott Hanselman. This is another episode of Hansel Minutes, and I've got Brian Pugh on the phone from LucidChart. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks. Lucid chart. Um, I think I installed this actually. This is a, uh, a flow charting application. I have this in my Google apps. Correct. Yeah. So Lucid chart is a online diagramming tool, which means your audience is probably most familiar with Microsoft Visio as a competitor of ours. So we do flow charts, Venn diagrams, UML, ERD, UI mockups for websites, for mobile, both Android and iPhone. Um, all the same kind of functionality you would expect from Microsoft Visio. Uh, what makes LucidChart a little bit more unique is it's also a web-based app. Uh, that means we get collaboration, real-time collaboration. It's, you can comfortably have 10, 20 people working on the same diagram at the same time. It's very easy to share. You don't have to keep track of versions of files or have a shared drive where you're trying to collaborate with other people. And it's integrated with the web. We integrate with a lot of different applications that are on the web, the Atlassian tools like Confluence and Jira, um, Jive, Google Apps, Google Drive, Box, and of course Microsoft Word, which is kind of what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Um, I'm in Chrome, and uh, I can go. You know, looks like a looks like Visio. I file save as. I can save it as a Visio file, but I can also do JPEGs and PNGs, and uh, it it's kind of creepy because it is really full featured. Yeah, so we've been working on the feature set for a couple of years now and uh, really trying to make it the experience where you can get the job done as quickly and easily as possible. You can get in, get your diagram, get it looking beautiful, and get out. So it looks like it's done by a great graphic designer, but user experience has been a focus of ours for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's doing things on the web that, you know, I, I'm always surprised that the open web can do what it's doing, but I'm moving a box around. I'm in this uh, demo called how I how can I make friends online and right. it's a big flow chart really big I mean there's you know 50 boxes here and they're all connected by these kind of bezier curves and then as I pick a box up and move it because these are connectors it's kind of automatically figuring out the way that those curves should be drawn right and it is amazing what you can do with browsers nowadays and that's that's what got us excited if you go back to 2008, when we very first started having the idea for LucidChart, it was really Ben Diltz, our CTO, who had been working in another startup. He had been using Visio at that startup, and they had some frustrations with what they were doing, and he kind of looked around for something that would work in a collaborative environment. Found he didn't see a lot there, but it was right about the time when browsers really started to expand what could be done with JavaScript and HTML. So he decided kind of to take his nights and weekends and see if he couldn't make something real out of that and spent a lot of time working with Canvas, and eventually decided this is something that he could really run with and started to for form a company, and here we are a couple of years later. But a lot of effort went into that initially, and to get the kind of performance that you want from a native application on the web, and with the way browsers, whether it be Safari, Chrome, IE, Firefox, they're all significantly improving the performance of their JavaScript engines every year. And that's been fantastic for us because it means we can keep adding more and more features and do the kinds of things that you're describing where we're recalculating Bezier curves on the fly in the browser on the open web. Yeah, I'm just amazed by this. I've opened up Chrome Developer Tools and um, even the... <laughs> I'm not trying to to to, to, uh, to kiss up to you or anything, but even the, 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 the DOM is very organized. It's like, you know how you expect to like hit a view source and right. just go, oh, no, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you know, but it's got like doc panel and UI draggable. It's all very kind of organized and uh, and thoughtful. Even the markup is clean. So we spent some time to really make sure that we had it clean. 
So we've got you know north of 200,000 lines of JavaScript to make this application run. Mm -hmm. So when you get to that scale for a web app, you know most web apps when people talk about JavaScript, it seems that most people are talking about small amounts of JavaScript to manipulate a form, things like that. But here we're talking about doing serious mathematical operations, having a full model and a view, and it, it's a full application built in JavaScript. So we did spend some time making sure that we had organization, both in terms of the DOM and the CSS, and especially in terms of the JavaScript itself and how we organize our JavaScript code so that it can be maintainable and uh, we can continue to add features at a reasonable pace. Mm -hmm. And so this is, you said 200,000 lines of JavaScript, and is what is the back end, and what's the kind of the ratio between what work's happening on the back end versus what work is just sitting in JavaScript on my in my browser? So most of the work is happening in that front end in the browser. Essentially, all all the calculations, uh, any of the math that needs to happen, that's all happening in JavaScript. And uh, it, just kind of as a side note, we were even able to get it if you pulled this up on an iPad or an Android tablet. We have touch drawing where you could draw a square and it would turn that into a process block. So you would touch a square literally and it would recognize that's a square. Or if you do like a little person, it would recognize that as a UML use case. Um, so even pattern recognition of what people are drawing, we're able to do in the browser in JavaScript with currently we support Android and iPhone. But these JavaScript engines are getting so powerful that you can do amazing things using the open web. Wow. Sorry, and to the rest of your question on the back end, we're using, so Linux is, they're all Linux servers. We use some PHP, and we've moved a lot of our things from sort of a monolithic PHP application to a services-oriented architecture, and we're writing those new services all in Scala, which if people aren't familiar with Scala, it's a language that runs on the JVM, so it, you can take advantage of the full Java ecosystem, but it's, a, it's described as a more modern language for the JVM. Um, but we do use MySQL, Mongo, Apache, um, kind of a standard stack there for, well, a standard stack outside the Microsoft world. We don't have a lot from the Microsoft world that we've done in the past. So the front end is all JavaScript, and you're doing this in a non-Microsoft stack, and uh, are you using, like, Ember or Angular, or is this your own uh, framework? We're using the Google Closure Library. So when we initially wrote the app, when Ben started it, he kind of rolled his own with JavaScript and all. He went to Google I.O. a few years ago and heard about the Google Closure Library, which is what Google used for Google Calendar, Gmail, and they open-sourced it a few years ago at Google I.O. Mm -hmm. And we were really impressed with what they had there, so it took some time and kind of rewrote it and integrated the Google Closure Library into our JavaScript code base. And that gave us a lot of what we needed to keep a well-organized, maintainable, large JavaScript code base. You get namespacing is handled well minifications handled well, dead code removal, um, as well as typing. So our code base currently is about 88% typed in JavaScript. So you can put annotations in comments on any of your types in the JavaScript, and the Clojure compiler is pretty good about following those types through and letting you know if you've got any type errors. So it's helped us to have that class of errors taken care of as well by the Clojure compiler. Mm. So you're inter you might be interested in things like TypeScript. This this idea of type JavaScript is not foreign to you. No, we're like I said, our code base is currently about eighty eighty eight percent typed, and we found that to be very useful. And especially as you get a larger and larger code base, and more and more people coming in to work on it, and uh, it helps both for the readability as well as what it catches before we hit production. Oh, so this is this, you're the second person to say that if something gets too big you really want typing. Some people say that you can make up for lack of typing with just a lot of tests, but other people insist that when you have a large enough code base, you really need this typing. Well, the way I look at it is that with typing, there is a class of errors that I can feel guaranteed I don't have. That doesn't mean I don't need to write tests, and there may be a whole lot of other errors in my code base, but there's at least a class of errors that I have essentially a proof that I don't have those particular errors in my code base. So I find it really, really helpful that it's a set of tests that I don't have to write um, because I've got that guarantee from a compiler. Mm. Very cool. Well, one of the things that uh, surprised me about Lucidchart was not just that it's kind of cool and it's written in JavaScript and it does everything in the browser, but was the level of integration with other stuff. Um, and I remember integrating it with Google, um, Google Apps. I think I, I have a free sign-up. Mm -hmm. So I was able to log into Google Apps, and it just kind of appears 
within Google as its own as its own thing. So it's in the Google Apps Store. Correct. Um, but what really kind of freaked me out was that that Office apparently has an App Store. Correct. So we've seen it as kind of one of our differentiators is that we can be part of the open web, that we are a SaaS application, we're on the web, we're all just JavaScript, HTML5, and as part of that, it makes it really easy for us to integrate with other applications that people need as part of their productive work environment. I, I think I mentioned earlier some of those, like the Atlassian products, but you bring up Google. We are in the Chrome web store, so you can install directly from Chrome. We're also in the Google Apps marketplace, so if you use Google Apps for domains, you can manage your Lucidchart team from within Google Apps. Most recently, and what you just alluded to, is we've also integrated with Microsoft Word. So Microsoft approached us about a year ago, and they actually approached us and told us about they had this idea that they were going to make an app store for Office products. And to be totally honest, when they first approached us, we were pretty skeptical. We were, I was kind of concerned from multiple avenues. One, we're not a Microsoft shop. We don't have a lot of experience with Microsoft products, and I was imagining having to get Visual Studio on everybody's machines and you know dive into another whole ecosystem that we would need to become familiar with. But I was also a little concerned because we're obviously a competitor to Visio. And I, I also had this concern that I'm going to go build an app, do all this work, and then at the last second Microsoft may say, well, maybe we don't want a competitor <laughs> to Visio to be in the store, right? Yeah. So after they approached us, we talked with them quite a bit, and frankly, at, at one point we just got real clear and said to them, you know, you do realize that we are a direct competitor with Visio. How, how can we feel comfortable that this is really going to happen? But in talking with them, we were able to get some guarantees that made us comfortable to move forward. And uh, they asked me to come up to uh, Redmond and spend some time to learn more about what their approach was going to be for office, office applications. So I got up there, learned about what they were doing, and immediately was really, really impressed and really happy to see the direction that Microsoft was headed. Um, the new approach, at the time they were calling them agaves, now they're called um, apps for office. But they, we went up there and I, they started telling me about these agaves and what they were describing is that you could write plugins for office using the open web as opposed to it being, you know, VBA or, you know, ActiveX controlled or anything like, none of that was even mentioned the whole time I was up there at this uh, training session they had. It was all about the open web, which got me as somebody providing a SaaS product, really excited because I knew that there would be a lot of potential for us there. It was interesting because most of the other people who were up there had been working in the Microsoft ecosystem quite a bit and had mm -hmm. been creating things for Office. And as I would talk to people at lunch sessions and things, most of them looked at it and were a little bit freaked out by what Microsoft was saying. They were kind of saying, what, what is Microsoft doing? This is a huge change. And I was looking at it saying, this is fantastic. I love the direction they're going. So I felt a little bit like a fish out of water up there. I was the one who really was embracing what Microsoft was saying and, th and seeing this is, this is the way I like to see the web go as a whole. And it's great for me as a startup, you know, in the SaaS space that I can integrate my application into Office in a really seamless way and without having to retrain my whole engineering staff. Right, exactly. Like ActiveX at the time was, was great and was a way to, to distribute software, to update software, you know, to bring software from point A to point B and to get it running on your machine without really thinking about installing, you know, and it was a way to run in process and bring something and integrate and compose, uh, you know, an application out of, out of its composite parts. But that's what the web does really well. Right. And, you know, I, I'm just like literally, I go up to the office store, I click, uh, I find a uh, lucid chart here. I say add, it's marked as free, then I go into office, so I'm, I'm on the web here, I click add, then I go over into office, which is not on the web, I go to the insert menu, and then there's a thing that says apps for office. So I click on this apps for office thing, and there was, it's, there said there was nothing, and I was like, okay, I clicked add, and there's nothing, I hit refresh, and then Lucidchart just appeared inside right. of the apps for office box, inside of Word, so then I'm going to click insert, and then this, this, um, what do you call this? This, this pane opens up on the right, right hand side. And that's what I, I mean, you're getting at kind of what I really was impressed with about the architecture of the Apps for Office, um, initiative that they had, which is that it's based 
on the open web, you just install. What I provide to Microsoft is essentially a manifest file. So what that means is I give them a file that's an XML file that just has some basic information. It's got a URL, which is going to be used to initialize my application, some metadata for the store listing, um, the type of application that I'm going to be creating, and we can talk in a minute about what those are, as well as what permissions my app's going to need. That's really about all I need to give to Microsoft. And then Microsoft can list it in their store with that metadata that I provided. And when you just installed that into Word, and then you said, you know, I want to run the Lucidchart app, it opened a task pane because we said we want to be a task pane app, which means, you, as you were describing, over to the right-hand side in a task pane came up Lucidchart as an app. And what came up was the URL that I had provided in that manifest style, file that I gave to Microsoft. So it basically hit my URL, went over to the Lucidchart servers. What we've got there in that task pane is just an embedded instance of Internet Explorer. So it is truly the web that's running right there inside of Microsoft Word. It's just Internet Explorer there loading a URL. Mm -hmm. And what I love about that is just how loosely coupled that is. I, we've done integrations, as you mentioned earlier, with a lot of different um, third parties. And in some cases, we have to do a lot of work like write a, a bunch of code, maybe in Java or JavaScript or something that runs on somebody else's servers. And that introduces a lot of friction for me as a developer because if I want to update, if I've got a bug fix or a new feature that I want to add, I have to coordinate with whoever that third party is. I need to create the new code, package it up, send it over to them, and in some cases they go through a QA process, and eventually they list it on whatever store or marketplace they've got, and eventually it gets to my users. But with this model that Microsoft has, I give them that manifest file essentially one time. If I've got a bug fix, a new feature to add, I just add that on my servers, because ultimately when you open that Lucidchart app inside of Word, it just hit my servers. So the friction to adding value to my customers has gone way down. It's, it's fantastic because Microsoft and I aren't tied at the hip. They've, they've got the URL. I make whatever changes I need to make and uh, just go through the QA process myself. And users can immediately start benefiting from any bug fixes I have, any new features that we add. So you're, you're in control. You're exactly. in total control. I'm in total control, and there's just very little friction for me getting the value to my customers as early and often as possible. Right, because if you had to, you know, resubmit to the store every time you did something, then you wouldn't be a web application anymore. Exactly, exactly. And with, and with some of the integrations that we've worked on, that's kind of the model we have is, you know, you've, there's, a, there's another code base for that integration, and we work on that code base to add new features or fix bugs, and then we throw it over the wall to another group, the third party, and... Mm -hmm. Like I said, in some cases, they want to do a whole QA process themselves. So you end up at weeks to get a new feature or a bug fix out, as opposed to in some cases, if there's a serious bug, I can have it fixed in a matter of hours for one of my customers with this model where it's open and I have full control over the application because it's running on my servers. Okay, so the pane opens up and you're running in there. You're running in the browser integrated how do you know that you're inside Word and not just in the browser? So in our case, what we did is in that manifest file, we gave them a specific URL which would indicate to us that we're running inside of Word. So that URL is not just lucidchart.com. It's a specific URL. It's just lucidchart.com slash office, if I remember right. But uh, in that, we know and we can see with a few other things that Microsoft will pass in the headers just to confirm it. But... Uh, we know that we're in that browser, which allows us to do things like th that view that you're seeing there. We're leveraging most of the JavaScript that we have for our main application. It's that same code. You know, 80% of it, maybe even 90% of it, is the same code as if you went to lucidchart.com slash documents. You would see the same code being executed. It's just a little bit of different sugar in the CSS and in the JavaScript to paint it in a way that fits a little bit better inside of a word than where I have the full stream to, to, to paint my list of diagrams that you can edit. Mm -hmm. So again, another huge benefit is I'm not duplicating code. It's 80, 90% the same JavaScript for our main lucidchart.com website as for what's running inside of Word. So is it, is it a different instance? Like is it a different version or fork and you just maintain it that way? And, and how, what kinds of things are different? You said a little bit of CSS to make it look more office-y. A little bit of CSS and... When I have the full screen, generally when I'm showing, the first thing you arrive at when you 
open our, our application and get logged in is the list of diagrams that you can edit or insert into your Word document. When we, on our main website where we have the full screen, we have fairly large thumbnails that we show for each one of those diagrams. Mm -hmm. Where we're inside of Word, we don't have the same amount of real estate. So instead we make kind of a smaller tree view, and if you click on any particular element in that tree view, we show a little preview of that particular diagram below it. Mm. So just because of the real estate is quite a bit different, we have a lot less real estate inside of Word than when we're in the browser with the full screen. We just change the way that UI looks a little bit. So the fundamental logic of what's, you know, how you're pulling all that data, how you're processing it, the data structures underneath it are all exactly the same. But the actual painting of the DOM, the UI, the CSS is a little bit different. Okay, so I, I see that it says log in to, to Lucidchart. So that's appeared within my Word document. Uh, right now it says it wants me to log in with Google, but theoretically I would log, I could log in with my office account someday. Yeah. And once you do log in, even if you, if you create a Lucidchart account now and come in through Office, we are able to do single sign-on. If you're logged into Office, they'll pass us on a token and we'll keep a mapping and we can log you directly in from then, from then on. So you could create, you could log in with, sing, with OpenID using Google or Yahoo. You could just log in with a normal username or password. And once we link that account, once we get that request from the browser that's running inside of Word, we'll get in there in some headers. We'll get an ID that will allow us to kind of do a mapping, and we'll say, oh, I know that this is coming from mm -hmm. Scott, so I'm going to log Scott in because I've got that mapping, and I know which account that exists mm -hmm. as in Lucid chart. So you will get some single sign-on as well. And I can see, this is kind of funny, so remember I said that I had set this up on Google Apps a while back. I can see a network diagram that I have I, I created at some point in the in the past with Lucidchart. I used your your free Lucidchart to uh, make a network diagram for a blog post that I did on about a Synology. So I can I can click insert and it says inserting and it's suddenly that diagram that diagram from the web-based flowcharting app is inside of Word which is still yes. freaking me out. So let me describe a little bit what's going on there. So this gets to the second aspect. You know, I talked about the first thing that impressed me about the uh, Microsoft architecture for these apps was that it was so loosely coupled. It was just this manifest file. The second thing that I really liked is that it's a pure JavaScript API. So at the endpoint that I mentioned where we have our individual app for Word, we include some JavaScript from Microsoft's site that gives us access to an API to insert things into Microsoft Word from JavaScript. So what just happened there, what, what the scenario you just described is, you know, you clicked on a diagram that you had, mm -hmm. you clicked on that insert button, and we made a JavaScript API call to the Office JavaScript using the API that's provided by Microsoft, and it, it actually inserted, we went to our servers, got a PNG of that diagram, and then created open XML that represents inserting that PNG and inserted it at the current cursor position in the Word document. So we have a JavaScript API that Microsoft's providing to say, insert at the current cursor position this content. And we created the open XML for the content that means a image that we had pulled down from our servers. Right, right. And then if I click on the diagram, hit edit, now I'm running in the browser, and here's the Lucid chart that I that I know, and here's my app. I make a small change, and then there's a right. button up here at the top that says "Return to Office." Right. So, and that kind of gets at the third thing that I'd say that I really like about their architecture. We talked about it's loosely loosely coupled. It's a pure JavaScript API, and it's really based on the web. So, because when you were in that task pane inside of Word, you were inside of IE. So. Any cookies that you wrote down, it is, the, it is the web. And all we really did when you clicked on that button to edit your diagram is we opened, we just had a link with a target that opened that diagram in IE in full screen mode. So now we're, we've broken out of Office and Internet Explorer is running as its own standalone process. The URL we gave it was the URL to the diagram that you chose to edit. And because you had already logged in and these two IE sessions are sharing the same cookies, you're, you're already logged in. You didn't have to log in again, and you just immediately landed at 
the uh, Lucidchart editor where you could change the diagram, make any changes you want. And as you mentioned, we put a, up in the top a little button that says return to office, which is essentially going to close that IE instance. And in Lucidchart, we save automatically all the time, so all your changes are always being saved. So it'll close that IE instance. The focus is going to go back to office, and then inside of office, the task pane will refresh itself. We send a notification to ourselves. We have some long polling going on there so that we know that changes have happened. It will refresh itself to have any modifications that you made while you were out in that IE session making changes to your diagram. So if you had added a brand new diagram, it would show up in your list. If you had changed something about an existing diagram, the little thumbnail preview you have of that diagram would also change without you doing, without you clicking on anything because we have an event system that's notifying the application inside of Word that, hey, you need to refresh yourself and get the latest and greatest from us. Right. I just hit return to office. I moved something, i.e. closed, and then there's a, a heartbeat of a moment, and then the thumbnail changed itself. Exactly. And, exactly. and you know, I, I think about, when I, when I look at experiences like this, I think about my, my wife, because we're, we're breaking down the technical details about how this happens. And I just gave her a, a new laptop with Windows 8, and, you know, I'm in there every once in a while fighting with it and trying to get her to, to not downgrade to Windows 7. And, uh, and then she's finally kind of figured it out. But when things aren't intuitive and just work, people get frustrated. And right. this is exactly how the embedding in the ActiveX kind of world of Word worked. You would say insert and you'd bring an app in and you'd go off and you'd just do stuff and then you'd close it and then it would update. Right. And that's that's exactly basically what I'm saying is Lucidchart is running exactly as it should. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's the <laughs> the path of least user surprise. Yeah. Well, we've been I I would like I said I was a bit skeptical a year ago when I first went up there because I was wondering what can a SaaS application like Lucidchart really do inside of a natively installed application mm -hmm. like Office. But the way it was architected, it gave us a lot of flexibility so that you really can do that. You can do the single sign-on. You can do real-time updates inside of Office as I'm changing it over in this IE window to the other side. Um, it really did give us the flexibility to do those kinds of things. So we've been really quite happy with the way things have turned out. Did you end up installing Visual Studio everywhere? We did not. In fact, we built most of this. The truth is we built most of this, and we weren't even inside of Word. Because, again, we're just building another kind of web app. So most of our developers have done, they're most familiar working in Chrome and using the dev tools of Chrome. So when we initially started working on this, we knew we wanted, I described we wanted a little bit of different UI with a different kind of tree and, you know, previewing. What we did is we had the basic structure there and had the basic thing working inside of Word. And then we just kind of went off and just said, let, let me just open that endpoint directly in Chrome and just mock out the call mm -hmm. where I call the... Uh, Office JavaScript API. And then people could go off and work and build the whole thing using exactly the tools that they were used to. And then once they had it all comfortable and ready to go, they would open it up in Word and try it, and pretty trivially we were able to get it working inside of Word. So I would say 60%, 70% of the development was done. A, not we, nobody ever even installed Visual Studio. So you, we didn't you have no, Studio. no one's running Visual Studio. Nobody's even running Visual Studio. We never even installed it. The only thing that was Microsoft-specific is that manifest file, mm -hmm. which is just a handful of XML tags. It, we spent maybe 10 minutes you know, handwriting the XML instead of having something generated for us. But literally 10, 15 minutes, and we had that manifest file ready to go. And beyond that, you're working in the open web, and you can use whatever tools you're familiar with. And we never even so much as installed Visual Studio and didn't run into any real problems working outside that Microsoft ecosystem to build an app for Office. This, this seems to me like now <laughs> I'm, I'm just realizing how many web apps I have. Like I'm looking at my um, my taskbar and I've got right. like Trello and I'm thinking I'm not going to be satisfied unless my web apps can do this now. You know what I mean? Like I know it might not be an obvious example of like Trello, but I want my swim lanes and I want my Kanban board to be able to integrate it into Word. You know, I, I realize I could take a screenshot, but I'm just starting to think about other things that I want in my in Word now. Because Office is like the last great application that is not on the web, you know what I mean? Right. Well, and that's, I mean, that that is the beauty of the open web, right, is that you can, 
you can choose best of breed. You can, you can, it's fairly easy for vendors like ourselves and different SaaS applications to integrate with each other. So I don't have to eat everything. I don't have to choose one vendor and I'm going to get everything from that one vendor. I can choose the best of breed and say, hey, I think for email, Google is, is the best thing out there. But I think for Office documents, I would rather use Microsoft Word. But I'm not going to lose Lucidchart, which is integrated with both Google Apps and Microsoft Word. I, I can kind of pick and choose best of breed so long as vendors who are great, well, as long as the SaaS companies out there like ourselves integrate with these big platforms that are out there. And that's been, you know, I've, as I've mentioned a few times, that's been core to our strategy is finding what are the applications out there, what are the web apps out there that are really key to our customers, and how can we make their lives really easy so that they, they don't feel like they have to keep switching context as they go from one thing to another. It's just a continuous, nice workflow as they go from writing in my Word document to inserting a diagram, writing some more, going back to the diagram and clicking edit and making a few tweaks to it, drop back in there, and just a nice, smooth flow. Yeah, I totally think my wife would dig this. This is really cool. So people can go to, to lucidchart.com and they can play with this and work on that. They can go into Word and go insert uh, and then go to the Office Store and get Lucidchart directly from there. Uh, Correct. They've got Google Apps. You've got, uh, for your premium stuff, you integrate with Confluence and Jira, which is cool. Yep, as well as Jive. Um, if people don't have Visio licenses, we have a Visio viewer that is right inside of Box. If you're using Box.net they, uh, and you have a Visio file that you can't open, you, just, you Lucidchart will show up as an option. It'll just open a read-only copy of that Visio file inside of Lucidchart. Mm -hmm. um, Gemini is another project management tool that has integrated with Lucidchart. Google Drive, if you want to store all of your Lucidchart documents out on Drive, yeah. that use that sharing facility. I think so. I think I may interrupt because I want to make sure that this I'm not trying to sell anyone anything, but just do this. Go to Lucidchart, click examples, and then below the little flash player, the little movie, click on one of the examples. Because the little the little pictures there are actually links to live documents. And that's I thought that was pretty cool. So two clicks and you don't have to install anything, you don't have to sign up for anything. Or even from the homepage. If you're on the Lucidchart homepage, right. you can just try a demo document. You don't have to sign up or anything. Oh, try you it can now. Say, get started. Hit try it now, and it'll open it up, and you can play around with it a little bit. And if you decide you like what you yeah. have there, you can always save it and create an account so that you don't lose what you played with. Yeah, but yeah I was just you want to just get started. I was encouraging people to go to examples because the the try it now, and this is here's a little advice for you, Brian. It's it, it's it's very basic. Like it's just a start now, and there's nothing there. What what would impress me was when I went to uh, examples. Like, you know, I was like, okay, it's a flowchart. I go to examples and I clicked on, like, I think I clicked on work together and it was just like, holy crap, this is complicated. Like, it was a big thing. Like, it, it just, for some reason, opening a really complex multi page app, multi page document rather, is so much more impressive to me. And then I started moving stuff around. Right. I don't know. I'm geeking out over this stuff. This is really cool. I, I think that what you've done is really, really neat. And uh, I, I just love seeing full applications written in the web. I'd like to talk more sometime about the actual, like, ha the, the, the debugging process. And, the you know, I, I think that people feel a little helpless doing debugging, even, even in Google Chrome's great developer tools. Uh, sure. When JavaScript errors happen, you can kind of find yourself uh, stuck. Right. Yeah, well, we could talk through some of that and how we, uh, and, and, and I could even bring in, I mentioned Ben, who's our CTO, who's been really the visionary around how you get that JavaScript. How do you make an application as large and complex as a diagramming application is that is purely JavaScript and HTML5? It runs on an iPad, it runs on an Android tablet, it runs in Chrome, it runs on IE 9 and above. How do you do that? And, uh, we could... We could talk through that. It's a whole other subject that you could spend another half an hour on e easily. Yeah, let's totally do that. That's fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Brian Pugh, for talking with me today. Thank you. Appreciate the time. This has been another episode of Hansel Minutes, and we'll see you again next week.